Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to entertain a motion to uh, reconvene. I make a motion that we reconvene our meeting. Have a new second in discussion. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would like to make you. I'm sorry, second. I didn't hear the second. Thank you. Madam Perry, did we do any, did we make any uh, I think that? Yes, you did. What up? Uh, no, actually, I have a motion. Go ahead. Um, I have three motions. First, I move to authorize the city attorney to represent the council's interests at the same hourly rate paid to the city attorney regarding disciplinary, disciplinary actions against Councilwoman Lewis con concerning a development deal resulting in a five to seven million dollar loss to the city and her contact, her contact towards staff and officials with council members and staff authorized to be deposed by the procurator. Second. Property moved and second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? It passes uh, four to three. I have a second motion. I move that we hold a special call meeting at 3 p.m. on November 26th here or at City Hall if this location is unavailable for the purposes of an executive session to include personnel and disciplinary matters, litigation, and real estate. Second. Property moves and second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? That passes five to two. And lastly, I uh, would like to make a motion to instruct the city manager to instruct our communications director to approve all communications regarding these matters to uh, to have all communications regarding these matters um, approved by the procurator. Second. Property moves and second. Any discussion? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. First of all, I would like to say that I want to tell all my constituents, do not worry. Um, this was not what, I have done nothing wrong, and um, this is not what we discussed was going to happen, um, but someone is going rogue and doing their own thing, and so um, this is unprofessional. This is not what our voters put us in office to do, which is fight and launch investigations against each other, but this is what my colleagues choose to do, and I am fine. Let's go. Discussion. Discussion, go ahead. I think it's important uh, to understand that um, when you hear actions like this, you've entrusted us to be fiscally responsible and to work on your behalf to not allow any municipality or anybody to divert funds from five to seven million dollars in the direction of any other municipality. We struggled too long, we fought too long to become a city. Whether it's intentional, uh, it needs to be found out. And if there are any, if there is any proof, we need to move forward in the way that you would have us to move forward as your representatives. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes. Um. Is this investigation going to be finished by November 26th? Um, Attorney Walker, several of us are going out of town for the National League of Cities. That is, is, is this investigation going to be completed by November 26th? Let's be realistic. By November, so I think from what, from what I've heard today, it, it sounds like you're going to meet to further discuss this on the 26th. No, is this what this act is that what we're meeting for? Um, I think I can speak to that. I, we're going to procure an attorney. She has, she still has the floor. So, what are we meeting on November 26th for? So, it sounded like to discuss disciplinary proceedings and potential disciplinary actions against Councilwoman Lewis. Okay. Is that what we're meeting for? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Yes.
disciplinary proceedings, real estate litigation, and personnel on the 26th. So that's kind of just where we stand right now. So I will bring that attorney back okay. after he, he will speak to whoever is, he feels necessary in his judgment, her judgment, their judgment. Um, and basically he'll take over. He'll give direction. I'll bring him, her, back to the meeting and he can give direction. I'll let you discuss with Mr. Blue. No, that's fine. Okay, let's go. This is the communication. Oh. That passes um, six to one. All right, I'll entertain a motion to uh, close the work session. I'll make a motion to close the work session. Second. Probably move this afternoon discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor. That passes. We had two negative. Okay, that's the next. Madam Clerk, go ahead. Roll call. Roll call. Uh, so, are you calling the meeting? Officially calling the meeting? I am. Roll call for today. Council Member Raw? Present. Council Member Dunn? Present. Council Member Woods? Present. Council Member Gilliard? Here. Council Member Jackson? Present. Council Member Fleet? Present. Council Member Baker? Present. Also present is Mayor Edwards, the City Manager, Mr. Donald, City Attorney, Ms. Walker, you have a quorum. Okay. We have an invocation by Chaplain followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Those of you that would like to stand, if you'll stand with us. I have our junior chaplain with us tonight, but he's asked me to do the prayers. Let us pray. Dear gracious God, we've heard that a picture is worth a thousand words. Not only in words, oh God, but a picture is worth a, a vision, a reminder, a focus. We stand here today with our grandson. Reminds us that when we voted to become a city, I realized that I would never see the benefit, but I did it for him and my children and my children's children and those generations to come. And that's why we all did it. For some of us would never see what we voted for. That's why every day, every moment is a special moment. Every decision that we make is going to affect all the generations to come. So we need your wisdom, oh God. We need your guidance. We need you to bless us. For even as we grow as a city, we now have experienced voting and seeing new come and those who we love to go. But it's part of what we do as a city. And it reminds us that it's never personal. It's not about us. It's about those who are coming behind us. So, oh God, we pray that everything we do and everything that we say will be for those who are coming, the least of them, and that they will benefit for every vote, every decision. And we expect you to continue to guide our leadership, our mayor and our council, our city manager, all our department heads, so that those who are looking at us, that we'll make the right decision for them. This we pray. Let us all say amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Dr. Kirk, I would say we have no announcement for presentation. Correct, Mayor. There is no presentation or announcement. Next on the agenda is adoption of the council agenda. Are there any changes? Are there any changes? Any changes? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the agenda for November 12, 2019, as presented. Second. Part of the second discussion. Discussion. I would like to see the strategic plan for the consent. I can't hear you. She wants to pull the strategic plan for the consent that we've already got a motion. Would you be okay with the? With the uh, 
Yes, it's not on the agenda. Yes, it is on the agenda. It's on the consent. It's on the consent. Are we Item appealing the whole agenda or the consent? No, I just want to pull Her. What are you talking Would you about? entertain that? Because, yeah, it's not on the consent agenda. Item number four. Item number four on the consent agenda. I'm looking at item number four. Come under Council approval of the twin. That's a strategic plan, not the. That's what you said. That's what she said. That's what she said. What are you talking about? That's what she said. That's not the T. Dallas Smith. No, I'm just. Was the maker of the motion accepted? We failed this two times. No, this is just the second. It was only on the agenda last. Madam Chair, how many times have we held? This, this will be the second. It was moved to last at the last meeting to the regular agenda and tabled until today's meeting. Okay. So this will be the second. Okay. Uh, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Annie. Yes, Mr. Khalid. I do think it's important to note that it was tabled at the last meeting and not discussed. That's what I said. Right. And so now it's on the consent agenda to once again not be discussed. We have not had a public discussion about it. Is that correct? It was tabled because Council Member Gilliard said she had not read it. But it's let me, let me, ask, it, it's let me ask the question a different, 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 different way. Have we ever had a public discussion in a regular council meeting about this strategic plan? No. To, adopt the agenda, to adopt the plan, no. Okay. Uh, let's vote. Actually, go ahead. Uh, the work session, the uh, second item with a T down, is that on the consent agenda? No, no, it's not on the agenda at all. Okay. Okay, let's vote. All in favor? Of the consent agenda? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Approving the agenda. Approving the agenda. For November 20th. Approving today's agenda. Okay. Let me see the hands again. Excuse me, Mr. Khalid. Let me see the hands again. All those that are voting. Voting. Voting on today's agenda. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank it fails for lack of full vote, so we can go home. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would like to make a motion to approve tonight's agenda with the removal of the strategic plan from the consent agenda to the regular agenda. Second. Property moves to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? That passes unanimously. Yes. Next, we have the approval of the October 22nd Council Meeting Minutes. I'm going to obtain a motion. I make a motion to approve the minutes for October 22nd, 2019. Second. Properly moved and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? That passes. Is that the one? Yeah. That passes unanimously. Madam Clerk. Next item is public comments. <coughs> Speakers will be granted a total of two minutes each, and public comments will not exceed 30 minutes. Speakers will not be allowed to yield or donate their time to other speakers. Speakers must identify themselves and their addresses prior to speaking. Speakers may only address the presiding officer, shall observe all rules of decorum. No debate, disrespect, or obscenities shall be tolerated. The presiding officer shall rule any such individual out of order that fails to comply with the foregoing. We have a total of 10 speakers. I will call the first five off if you would line up as I call your name. Juliet Rankins, <coughs> Barbara McGee, Yasina Bradford, Valerie Deloche, Glenda Collins. Juliet Rankins, District 4. 
And I just want to comment on, um, I came up before and I spoke about um, one of the people here on the radio and I heard uh, you guys on the radio again on Veterans Day, I believe. And I just wanted to um, make some comments about what I heard. I didn't hear the whole thing. But Councilwoman Goss was on there and she was saying that um, gentrification was good. No Councilwoman Goss, he tried to help you out. The poor people here do not feel gentrification is good. We're not facing it here like other places, but if that's what you're bringing, think again. Okay? You cannot go out in public saying stuff like that. As I said, he tried to help you out. I heard what you said about Over Street and that you wouldn't want her for the seniors. So I don't know where you were coming from. On one side, you're saying it's good. On the other side, you're saying you're trying to help the seniors who are going to be displaced. So you have a majority progressive people here. That kind of thinking we do not agree with. You need to come again. And you do that a lot. And I'm just here to let you know we don't like that. Okay? Uh, also, I'm not, I'm hoping that we haven't thrown seven million dollars away when we had a seven million dollar deficit because we don't like other people. Do not throw our money away for that. Has it gotten to that point? That's all I have to say. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, Mayor and Council and the citizens of the city of South Fulton. My name is Barbara McKee, and I live at 120 Alicante Street in District 6. I'm coming you here tonight. Most of you know me as Miss Lyft or Barbara. Uh, with Lyft that I created and founded in 2004, our mission was to feed clothes and provide homes for individuals. However, the need was so great when we got here in 2004 that we had to ask for partners. So throughout from 2004 to now, I asked people to partner with me, and they did. We fed in any time on a monthly basis two, 3,000 people in poverty for food. You, many of you might not know that this area is considered a food desert, which is an area that has limited access to affordable and nutritious food. So in saying that, we need to understand that there's a lack of good food here in the city of South Fulton. But I partner now with Kingdom of God Church. We will have a food pantry opening on November 6th and ribbon cutting. We invite you all out to that November 16th at 11 a.m. Pastor Warren Henry and his church, the Community Food Pantry, will be having a ribbon cutting a Thanksgiving meal and the food pantry will be open. So we are very thankful to that organization that has stepped up and would like to fight hunger in our area. So we ask that you come out on November 16th and support this, a ribbon cutting at 11 a.m. Then you will come and get you a nice pre-Thanksgiving meal and to the food pantry. And you can bring a can of food if you like. So again, thank you. Good evening. Um, hi, I'm Valerie Deluche. Um, I'm a little under the weather tonight, excuse me. Um, I don't know if this is the appropriate forum for this, but I, I'm new to the area. I'm a, a new homeowner. I've lived here about three years. Um, I'm over off of uh, Stonewall Hill and Campbellton Road, 2731 Daydew Lane in the uh, Waterford Commons. I'm unfamiliar with which um, district I'm actually in. Um, does anybody know where that would be to? Who was that? Right there at our intersection, um, from getting on from Stone Old Hotel to Campbellton Road, it's um, it's a very dangerous intersection, as probably everybody who travels that way knows. And I think that um, you know that the first woman has concerns about the development of the city and the change and everything like that, but um, it's inevitable that it is going to be growing because of all the under, underdeveloped land and the growing of the greater Atlanta area. And I think these are the types of things that have to be thought about for infrastructure, that if we're going to be building a building, that we have to um, support the infrastructure for that. And um, right now, um, I, I would suggest either roundabouts um, or, there is room 
that you could take by eminent domain to widen that to make a, a designated right-hand turn lane on Sue Hamilton heading towards Camp Creek, and also for the people that are turning onto Stonewall Tell, uh, making a left-hand turn onto Stonewall Tell, you could also um, devise some of that for a right-hand shoulder pass lane for the rest of the traffic on Hamilton. Um, there's a lot of school buses and whatnot that are really having a hard time in the mornings and certain times of the day, and it's just going to get worse. Um, there's a lot of development further down the road, and that's turning into the main drag. So we really have to figure out a way to either make Hamilton a, a two-lane two highway or, or something. So thank you for that. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Glenda Collins, District 5, Morning Creek Drive, Bellwood, HOA. I would like to thank Councilwoman Jackson for the service she bestowed upon District 5 for two and a half years. During this time, she listened to the citizens and taxpayers and fought to keep a quick trip, truck stop, way station and scale from being built on Buffington and Flat Shoals Road. This would have destroyed the quality of life in the area and reduced the home prices and eliminated any economical growth. The negative impact with these trucks running their engines 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, would have a negative impact on our environment as well as affected our health. <clears throat> Ms. Bradford? Okay. She, I don't have anything to say. She feels mm -hmm. right, but thank you. Next, Calvin Bennett, Ivory Dennison, Dixon, Sam Bowen, <coughs> Pam Harris, and Joyce Jones. <clears throat> hey, good evening, Mayor Constant. My name is Calvin Bennett, 1675 Lampost Place, California, City of South Fulton, uh, District 5. And I came, came here to just give my thanks to Councilwoman Jackson. You know, um, when I met you two years ago, when we were all running to represent the city, to give service to the city, you know, I met a stern black woman. And over the past two years, I just have to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to be involved in the politics of this city and to witness, you know, how to put projects together and how to make decisions and how to uh, motivate people to serve. One thing I know about you, um, Councilwoman Jackson, is that you're a woman of your word. You always be on the side of righteousness. I've never seen you in a fight when it comes to politics where I disagree with you. I've always disagreed with you when it came to the politics of the city, fighting crime, code enforcement, even just senior citizen issues. I appreciate being a part of your, the army that you put together to either work on the meadows. Even though it was a project that we couldn't follow through on, it was a good exercise for us as citizens to work together and to show, you know, how to get things done and sometimes how we have to go around obstacles. So your, your two and a half years, regardless of the other, your two and a half years for District 5, you've done a wonderful job. You've done a wonderful job. And I'm, I want to just say thank you for giving me a chance to be a part of your team. And I'd like to say to the other con councilmen, the, the councilmen elect, I know Corey, you're my man. I know he's going to do a great job. And he'll have my support also. And thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council persons. I am tired of appearing before this council requesting that you all do something about these motorized vehicles. It is a pain in the dear ear. I'm 76 years old. I had no idea that in my last days on earth that I would have to listen to that blank-to-blank -blank noise. It, those vehicles are out there 
But when I call 911, they ask me the address. Ain't no address. Cause you, if you took, took, head uh, south on um, Ingram Road from Hampton Parkway all the way down to Miles Road, if you look on the left, you'll see five or six different trails where they are, where they drive. Uh, less than eighth of a mile, probably from Campy Parkway. If you look on your left, there was a used to have a post sign up there, no trespass. It was a green gate. They have taken that down, and they ride until midnight. I mean, I don't know what to do. I hate to see about trying to do litigation, but I expected more from this council than this. We keep hiring people. We need to provide good service with the resources that we have. And I don't think that anybody should have to put up with that. Uh, this past Saturday night, I know they were Saturday night, they were out till to midnight. It used to be just on Sunday afternoon. Um, and it used to be, uh, I could tell the racial identity because they used to have their, where you could see, now they have these shields on. You don't know who they are. I just know they make a heck of a lot of noise, and I'm sick and tired of them. So I'm asking you to not let me come down here and flap my jaws, but that you look at this issue. And uh, if you need a task force, do that. We, we, we talked about uh, a previous meeting about a $500,000 tank. I don't know whether it's reality or not. But you need to allocate some funds for that. It's just not right that I should have to put up with this. And I'm sick and tired of begging. And I'm not going to keep begging. I'll be trying to uh, seek other action. Thank you very much for allowing me to share my feelings with you. And I hope you have a resolution. Because I'm all, I'm too old for this. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, my name is Pamela Harris. I live in Montclair Estates. Uh, I'm in District One, and I'm actually piggybacking on my neighbor, Colonel Dolores Hampton. She lives in the first house in Montclair Estates. Uh, since the diversion of traffic from Cascade Road, the traffic is coming down Bruce Place, and someone is going to get killed uh, in that intersection of Montcalm Drive. Well, Montcalm turns into Bruce Place and New Hope Road. There's an accident at least once a week. Uh, I, I, it's my fear that it's going to be a fatal accident, so I'm hoping that someone will really take a look at that because it's dangerous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Sam Bowen. I'm a resident of District 2. I live at 3515 Ellington Way. And over uh, about two years ago, you appointed myself and about seven other members to the Code Enforcement Board. Since that time, we've heard over 2,000 cases. A significant portion of those cases have been blighted properties. So I'm here today representing my board members and asking you all to expand the Bride of Property Fund and give us tools we can use to help our residents. As you know, the, the, the primary mission of the Code Enforcement Board is to promote and improve the health, safety, and wellness of our community. And our hands are somewhat tied when we have residents come before us pleading and begging for properties to be fixed right across the street from them, where there are dead animals in there, people who are up to no good in there. And we could only tell them, speak to your council member or speak to your legislators, do whatever you can, but we can't help you. So again, I urge you all to um, move past whatever differences you all may have and work towards expanding the blight, blighted property fund and give us whatever tools you can to help us go after these slumlords, go after these individuals that are doing wrong in our community, and maybe even turn some of these properties into assets for our community. So again, please consider that when you all make a decision on that particular motion, I believe. Again, my name is Sam Bowen, and it was a pleasure to speak to you all. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Joyce Jones. I'm in District 1. And uh, I just want to say um, I think it's a shame that the taxpayers of South Fulton, um, you're already in a deficit, and that we're having to pay for lawyers to fight uh, for council women, uh, whoever that um, uh, uh, that's we are council people that's 
causing uh, disruption or whatever, that we are having to pay for lawyers and uh, we are already in a deficit and I think that it's a shame that our taxes don't go up for paying account uh, for, for lawyers and um, I think it's not fair and I don't think that we should have to be the one to pay for that. And uh, I think that someone else should have to pay for the lawyers. Maybe they should have to pay for it. And I think that it's a shame. Mm -hmm. And I think that you all should look into whoever caused the trouble or whatever, that they should be the one to pay for the taxes, I mean, for the lawyers. Because I don't think we should have to pay for the lawyers because we did not cause whatever happened. And I think that they should have to pay for their own lawyers. And that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Mary Council, that ends public comments for today. Next on the agenda is comments from Council. Um, I have a clean up in partnership with the Cascade Business Merchants Association on this Saturday. Um, we'll be meeting at 10 o'clock at the Cascade Drive and Range on December 9th. Um, I have my District 1 Town Hall meeting. It will be at um, the Wolf Creek Library. I encourage you to come out. Um, and I am looking forward to our CFO's report so he can clarify for the, uh, clarify our financial standing based on the comments that we heard. We do not have a deficit. Um, so thank you everybody for coming out. So um, I also would like to, um, I'm looking forward to the CFO report as well to clarify uh, that information as far as the deficit. Um, just to respond to a couple of the constituents that came up, um, the young lady, welcome to the city of South Fulton. Um, there are traffic improvements that are coming to that location. There is a light that's proposed there. Um, you will start seeing probably construction or those type of improvements beginning in February, okay, of 2029, okay. Um, also, too, um, thank you, Ms. Rankin, for bringing that information, um, bringing that information in regards to uh, what I said on the radio. Not necessarily was I saying that I am for gentrification, but I was just saying that some gentrification is good in certain areas. Um, we do need some parts of this area to be gentrified. So I'm not saying that it's for everybody, but I'm definitely look out for seniors. So I do thank you for keeping me on my toes and you pointing that out. Also too, um, District 2, uh, we all will be participating in the, what is it, the cleanup this weekend. Um, I encourage all of our residents to definitely get involved. You'll see cleaning people and volunteers out and about, so please watch out for us and don't speed. Um, because that was what was happening last time, so a lot of us were in fear of our life. Um, also, too, on December the 12th, we will be having our annual charity for Bring Out the Dogs at St. James Live, so we're looking forward to that. All of the community is invited out. And thank you to all of the schools that allowed for me to come in um, this week to do our anti-bullying campaign. Um, that was very important to, for our students to participate and that was very exciting as well. So um, our schools are really strong and we have to believe in our school. And lastly, um, Ms. Ivory, I understand about the ATVs. We are definitely working on that. Our police have, uh, are getting drones to police that. Um, if you go look back at the tape of the Cab County chasing uh, the ATV riders, it's just something that we're really trying to Curve, and it is being worked on. I know you feel like it's not happening soon enough, but we are working on that. So continue to be vigilant and let us know when you have those issues. Thank you. Yes, um, thank you all for coming out. District 3 will have a economic development town hall meeting on Thursday at 6 p.m. Our guest speaker will be Mr. Pike, and he will be there to do, to do a uh, tag uh, discussion. Um, we did approve that legislation. Well, voters, thank you for doing that. That will help us with the development efforts throughout our city. Uh, he also will be there to talk about uh, the different developments that's going on in District 3. At the last council meeting, I did announce an article that was published in the Atlanta Journal Business Constitution about uh, the health and development 
that the Fulton the County Development Authority voted on and approved. Um, so we will have that. Uh, we will have that information available. Um, there was an article published in the Atlanta Journal Constitution, and we will have the fact sheet from the Fulton County Development Authority. Uh, we will also give you an update on the uh, Job Corps project, and then we also have some information uh, updates on the uh, redevelopment project that's going on uh, in reference to the apartments on Walkmore Road. So if you have any questions about development in District 3, if you want to hear about the TAT legislation, please uh, come out, and then also we will have um, our region representative from GDOT who will be there to discuss uh, any questions you may have about the GDOT process and any projects, GDOT projects that is going on in our region. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you if you're a resident of District 3 to bring you updates. Hi everyone. Um, I am going to follow up on the National League of Cities uh, awards that we received, along with um, Las Vegas, Nevada, Dubuque, Iowa, Evanston, Illinois, and Napa, California. And it's all about health and equity. At any rate, last week, um, my legislative specialist had to go for me because I couldn't go to Maryland to um, for the meeting of all the cities coming together. And what they came up with was a comprehensive coordinated policy agenda, internal resource alignment, structure for equity and race, authentic civic, authentic civic engagement. That's very important. External partnerships, collaboration and alignment, um, strategic funding and financing. And for the next 90 days, everyone will be working on a draft to ensure that they complete a plan. So not only was that a great opportunity that gave us national attention, but, and Mr. City Manager might have something to say about this in his report, but we got an invitation to apply for an All-American City Award that's related to this. So that's two big national things that we have going for us. So I'm really, really excited about that. On Thursday, District 4 will have an economic development and environment meeting at the airport room uh, hotel drive from 7 to 9. We have some really great speakers. I think there's a flyer on everyone here. And of course, um, our next meeting, and maybe I should do it now, we will have a Christmas and Kwanzaa party at the same hotel. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I want to reach out to this person um, because I didn't know if they would be here, but I just want to reach out to the new incoming council person. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he will be the next person, and believe you me, whatever you need from me, I am here, uh, and the community and everybody that has worked with me, I'm sure that they are they're willing to continue to work because we want to see District 5 to be what we know it can be. Okay? Thank you. And I would also like to thank Parks and Recreation for making our October 31st, 2019 uh, Halloween, well, not Halloween, whatever they call it, I was the, what you call the person with the pen? Willie Walker. I was Willie Walker. So, um, Walker. I was Willie Walker. But anyway, it was, it was beautiful. And Corey, that is something I hope that we can keep going. Riverdale does that. And hopefully that'll be an annual thing that we can do at Verde. We're trying to bring Verde back to life. And it's coming. But it was, a, it was beautiful. And people were still standing outside when I left at 30 to go into the haunted house. So if that's something, it was awesome. So if that's something that we can do, I would uh, gladly appreciate that for our district. Also, we're going to have our annual Ugly Sweater uh, Christmas Party on December the 21st. Is he here? Tony. Uh, 20th or 21st, whatever that Friday is. We'll be having that from 6 until 9. 
And uh, we're just asking everybody to come out. And the health care show, and I think you said it's going to be on November the 23rd. Uh, it's going to be the health fair for everybody for uh, enrolling as well as the um, animals. This will be the first annual um, fair that we're having for to get our dogs and our cats immunized. Uh, Immunization is done. So please come out. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to miss you, Ms. Jackson. Um, some of you all may have heard that we have a presidential debate coming to town next week. It's actually the first time there's been a presidential debate in the Metro Atlanta area in over 30 years. So for those of you all who do not know, when there's a presidential debate, they're actually here for the entire week. They're doing rallies all over the town and forums and town halls. Please go and meet those candidates and ask them to come to South Fulton and ask them what they're doing for people on the south side of Atlanta and South Fulton and let them know that you vote um, and that we vote. I want to say this. I, I don't have kids. I think I'm the only person up here that doesn't have kids. and. Um, I'm told that like no matter how many books I read or whatever it is that I that I learn about kids, I will never ever know what it is to have a kid until I have a kid. The same is true for cityhood. Lots of people love to say, oh, y'all knew what y'all were getting into, and nobody knew what we were getting into. Um, and lots of people like to claim um, they're the fathers of the city, the mothers of the city. Let me tell you, it's these eight people here that are the fathers and the mothers of this city. Other people help deliver this city, and we thank God for all the specialists that helped this baby be delivered. But when they got done at the Gold Dome, we were the ones that came home with this baby. We stayed up till one and two in the morning. We saw this baby through his terrible tubes when the answer for everything was no. Um, and so for our outgoing parent, Rosie Jackson, I just want to say thank you so much for helping us take care and raise this baby. <laughs> to our new stepdaddy coming in, I want to say welcome. Uh, you missed the terrible tunes, but we, we, we got a lot more toddler years. We got a lot more growing to do. So uh, thank you so much. Stop forever. Okay, uh, I'm glad Lee did that, so my buzzer won't go off. But special thanks to you, uh, Councilman Jackson. It has been a pleasure. Uh, I do have a lot to report real quick, though. Um, so for many of you who live in District 7 in the Oakley Township area, I know there were about 1,400 homes in convenience over the past three weeks because of a bridge being out. I believe as of close of today, that bridge has been repaired. So now you have two ways in and out of that subdivision. Special thanks to our public works, Mr. Venezuela, who came out to a community meeting and assisted us. Uh, with that, and thank you as well, uh, Mr. Odie Donald, for uh, helping us bring that to a close. It was uh, uh, a real inconvenience, and I thank you, pe thank thank you, people of Oakley Township, who <coughs> tolerated and put up with us throughout that time. Uh, second, I would like to also say thank you to the people of District Seven for reelecting me. Uh, I promise to continue to bring integrity and progressive uh, legislation to the city of South Fulton. With that being said, on Tuesday next week. Wednesday at St. James Lab, I am going to be having a thank you uh, celebratory uh, event. It's going to be free. Uh, uh, it will be hosted by comedian uh, LeVar Walker, uh, as well as uh, Q Parker of uh, Group 112, Grammy nominated 112, and Wingo uh, Richard from Jagged Edge. So please come out to St. James Live. Come, we will be in District 2, so we expect your hospitality. Thank you. Uh, on November 23rd, uh, I will be ho hosting a celebrity uh, basketball game at the Tracy Ryan Center as well. From 3 to 6 p.m., we're going to be giving everyone who comes a turkey as well as canned goods. I've partnered with a lot of people. Uh, this is the third year we've been doing this, and this year is coming to the old national area, and we will be giving out up to a 1,000 turkeys. So please come, bring people, bring your kids. It's going to be a, a fam family-friendly event uh, at the Tracy Ryan Center. And lastly, on December 16th, we will be having uh, a caroling event uh, sponsored by Q Park and Friends. We're going to be running shuttles from District 7 uh, all the way to 200 P Street for the seniors. It's going to be a plated dinner. Please come out. Angie Stone, Tony Terry. It was a big event last year, and we plan to make it even bigger. Thank you.
so much. No, I'm not singing this time. Um, I have two things to say. First, I want to acknowledge the fact that we had a groundbreaking in District 1 for the new puppets, uh, which is going to be great. I want to thank Councilman Round for all the support and helping to do that. Uh, if you go right in now, if you go right in now, you can see that they're excavating the property. The other thing I want to say is sometimes your heart gets very humble up here. Someone made the analogy that we are the mothers and fathers of this city. We bring this baby. But if we don't start doing the right thing, then the defects gonna be at our door. <laughs> defects will be at our door. I pray that we can move on to be what all of y'all want us to be. As we talk about awards that we are gaining, the enthusiasm, we're excited about that. But when the awards come, you still remember, if you don't turn around, do back to that your door. So I, I, my, my hope is that we move forward to all of this. And listen, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be negative. We've accomplished a lot. We've accomplished a lot regardless of what has happened, what you may hear, and things you may see, and things you may read. We have accomplished a lot. At some point in time, we're going to have to leave the movies behind. And I think we'll get there. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not to be negative or anything, you know. But the young lady came up and talked about, "You're right. Those attorneys don't have to be paid. They don't have to be paid." So, thank you all for believing in us through our good times and our bad, for believing in us and helping us to live to the product, deliver the product, 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 product that, that you deserve. Thank you. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the city manager's monthly report. Oh, okay. Good evening, Mayor and Council. A uh, brief report today, as you know, at the end of the month is when we provide the written report, but there are quite a few highlights that I just wanted to bring forward. I know one that I'm very excited about, and I know you've been extremely patient about, is that the we have received the authorization from uh, AT&T to move forward with the city's dedicated 311 number. So we are excited about that. The actual contract is with the city attorney's office for review once executed because it will, co it will also cost us less than $20,000 to be able to provide this, this service to our citizens. So that's a very big deal. So once uh, the city attorney reviews and we execute, it will take about six weeks to be able to have it up and running. So we expect to beat that January or end of January timeline. And so of course we'll be bringing back that rollout to you. Number two, Council Member Baker uh, highlighted already uh, the opening of the bridge at Oakley Road and Broaden that uh, did reopen today, but it is important to highlight we've met with GDOT and received uh, an overview of some of the other uh, road and bridge closures for the uh, dilapidated infrastructure that we inherited and just wanted to highlight that we do have uh, verbal commitments to take on the closed culvert uh, at Cascade as well as support for the bridge. We'll be providing them a letter um, under the city manager's signature requesting uh, that they take on about 80% of those costs. And so we expect for that or some semblance of support to be approved within the next 30 days. And so we'll, we're working with them closely on that. Uh, the third 
is I know that the strategic plan is on the uh, agenda uh, for today, so we're very excited about that. Actually, just last week, uh, we provided, which is a very big testament to the movement of the city, uh, some technical assistance to one of the five largest counties in the state of Colorado, Jefferson County, uh, Colorado, on their path towards uh, implementing their strategic plan. So that's a big step from us not having one to giving uh, advice and uh, technical support to other municipalities, especially those at the county level. So kudos to all the work that went into that. Uh, finally, well, not finally, but close to finally, uh, I think Councilmember Gilliard kind of doubled down on that when we look at the All-American City Award, which we were actually requested to apply for, which I think is a good uh, uh, representation of the work that's happening within the city um, that just kind of continues the recognition from NLC and ICMA and other respected entities uh, who want to highlight the, the good but very difficult and incomplete work that's taking place uh, in the city of South Fulton. Uh, we have highlighted the public's uh, groundbreaking, but we are making progress when it comes to the public safety center that exists in District 7, new subdivisions, uh, programs, um, one uh, that is proposed for District 4 that will be coming back uh, before you, as well as expanded uh, transportation efforts as well. So really excited about that. And then I think I'll close as we've talked about development and the city's growth Kudos to our residents for recognizing the importance of investing uh, in the tax allocation districts, as well as the opportunity for the homestead exemption, which were both on the ballot at the same time. I think that's very important because while the homestead exemption gives relief to our residents as they try to pay their normal uh, annual fees for taxation and help fill our coffers, the TADs will allow us to really grow responsibly all around the city without adding the burden to them. And so to see them vote over 70% on each one kind of shows that we have a very educated populace who understands not only how to develop, but also how to not take on a greater burden to themselves. So kudos to them for that. And so that uh, closes out my report for today. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I did forget to mention any announcements, and maybe you want to just throw mm -hmm. down that this Saturday is Bolt Trash Collection Day. That is correct. You want to give the uh, locations. One is Creel Park. You can bring your, your trash to Creel Park. Yeah, we have uh, Creel Park, Merck Road, and across the street. Uh, Stonewall Tail. Stonewall Tail. Uh, and so those three uh, areas are available, and while we have already set up a uh, pickup for our seniors. We do have uh, Mr. I believe Mr. Valenzuela is here. And so for those residents who have not already called uh, the city's 24-7 uh, uh, telephone number to set up uh, the curbside pickup for any of your uh, bulk trash, uh, we, are, we are not supposed to be, but we can still feel some of those uh, requests because we want to make some exceptions for our seniors. I uh, think, think that's it for, for that one, Council Member. Thanks for that reminder. Councilman, I'm oh, sorry, wait, she has for the phone number. It's 470-552-4311. That's 470-552-4311. But if you're a senior and you want to make that uh, reservation, you have to do it in this room tonight because it actually closed Friday. Yeah. yeah. Captain. 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 At the top of the year, there are four individuals that's going to have to be sworn in, and you mentioned that um, the that ceremony is not budgeted for. So, is that something that we're going to have to consider, or is that something that you're going to look for in the administrator? Yeah, so, we'll be bringing back a formal recommendation before. Uh, the next council meeting for which you'll have an opportunity to take action. But of course, we're trying to figure it out within budget now. So uh, it's a little bit too early to say, but we're aware of the parents of the court. With that being said, uh, I think we should consider doing it at a council meeting and not spending money on it. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Madam Clerk. Next item on the agenda is the CFO's um, monthly report, the final financial report for September 2019. So uh, this is the financial report for September 30th, 2019. It's an audited final report for 2019. An audited, because we'll have an official one that will be audited. So in 2019, we ended up with the $730,000 to the good. We had more revenues than we had in expenses. So the revenues were more than expenses by $730,000. We had the revenues of 69 to 84, 361, and our expenses were 68. If you subtract there, you find out that the difference is that 734, 36. Total other, all that one is from general fund, which is our main fund, general fund. <coughs> and from all other funds, we had the seven million dollars. Then uh, we had the general revenues, where more, we went more than we projected by one percent. And our expenses uh, went less. We spent less than what projected by 1.1 percent. Summary of uh, revenues. We, in the general fund, we had property tax that we had collected more property tax by 848 million than we projected. And the lost tax revenues is 35% of the total general fund, while the property tax is 45% of the total general fund budget. Business and occupational tax, we received more than 50, 250,000 than what we projected. As you see that most of the revenues are higher than what we projected. This is a summary of general fund revenues. You see that at the end of the fiscal year, we had this 69,284,361, which is 100%. Out of that, you see that we corrected 118,000 more than what we projected. However, there are some areas. This one in brackets means that we collected more. This one, 838, that means it was under. But at the end of it, our uh, average is 118,000 to be good. This is just the same of uh, just showing in a, uh, in a graph form as the same revenues. <coughs> Then we have general fund plus other funds. And general fund, total general fund is still the same number that you saw on the other uh, page, 69,284,361. Then we saved the uh, restricted grants of 367. So restricted <coughs> grant is a fund. We have revenue equals to expenses. So as you are seeing these revenues, you see also corresponding expenses on the preceding pages. Then we have Motel Motel, again it's a different fund. We, sp uh, we collected 118,511. You see the corresponding uh, expenses. Test plus, 6265,240. This is estimated, these are revenues that we received from Fulton County. Because until today, whatever we spend on test plus, Fulton County does do the job for us, and you, they pay on our behalf. But from now onwards, we will be receiving money from Fulton County. They have already given us $6.2 million. So we will be responsible for doing the projects as well as paying. But so far, we have not paid. They have been doing the project for us. We have been signing, and they have been paying on our behalf. And the next one we have is Solid Waste. We received the 283,439. You see corresponding expenses for a total of 76,238,661 in revenues. 
The next page is to talk more about expenses. Overall expenses is operating at less than 13% from budgeted amount for the year to date. And 18% of the general fund expenditure. Police has spent, police and fire, almost both of them, they spent 18% more than, less than what was budgeted. And uh, you have uh, uh, budgeted police is 12% and the uh, fire is 11% respectively. The city expenses for our debt, which is $12 million that we already paid, represents 20% of our total budget. Public works went above the budget, what was budgeted for some several reasons. There were some expenses that came from Fulton County after transition. So those ones were not budgeted, but when they came, we had to make some changes to the budget to action. This is a summary for all departments. Uh, from our elected officials, departments, each department up to 68 million 554 and 15, which is 100 percent. This one shows the percentage of the department for the total expenses for the budget. Again, this is a summary in graph form for expenses. This is where we have our pennies go. We have 47% of our expenses are for personnel. As you know, the payroll takes the biggest chunk of our expenses, so it's 47%. We have 70% of our total budget goes to supplies. Contracted services is 21%, and the, our loan, that's the paid out 10 million, uh, 12 million dollars, 25%, for a total of 100%. Some highlights of uh, our expenses. Overall of the general fund expenses, 91% of overall budgeted amounts. This is a good indicator that we didn't reach 100% or we didn't go to 101%. So we were within our budgets, actually less than uh, what we budgeted for. E911 services that we paid <coughs> through Fulton County, we paid it $1.9 million. It was within the budgeted amount. Other funds included restricted growth, capital expenses, and the solid waste, which have all spent within their budget. So whatever we received, we spent. Uh, there are at times where those funds will spend more, they will make it up for general funds, but they can't spend more than what they collected. This is expenses uh, in summary form. Again, you have uh, for the eight million dollar. That is specifically for general fund. You have ten thousand dollars that is transferred into all the Americans. You voted, council voted that we need this one every year. It doesn't have revenues. Revenues are transferred from general fund. E nine one 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 point nine one. As of now, we still don't have revenues for E911. We have to transfer it from general fund. Then we have restricted grants. Um, that's the 367. You saw it on the revenue. We received the 367, and we are spending 367. Same thing with hotel motel. We received 118. On revenues, we are spending here 118. On the HS plus, expenses, we received the 62, 65, 240, and we are putting here on the expenditure side of it. Capital projects. These are capital projects for 2019, $5.3 million. Remember, capital projects, they don't finish at the end of the year. They roll over to the following year. So there are some projects that they started in 19. They will continue in 2020. And in 2020, we have other projects as well. So 2019, 2020, they will be going on together until they finish. Some of them, they'll finish one year, some they'll finish more than one year. As they finish, we'll be putting in some projects again. Our projects is up to five years. So as others, they retire, some they'll be coming. It's an ongoing on capital projects. 
Then we transferred again from general fund development authority of two hundred thousand dollars. And you have solid waste, we received 293 and we spent 293. We had again to transfer from general fund 12 million dollars. So total expenses, uh, what we have transferred from general fund and from other funds is 75 million 598,315. Uh, this is expense, uh, this is a Revenues that we have, 69,284,000, and here you have expenses of 68. If you, have, you move or you subtract exp, uh, revenues and you subtract expenses, you have a difference of 730,346 as our surplus. And that surplus is moved or put into our fund balance. So if our fund balance was positive, that would have been an addition to our fund balance. Now that one reduces our fund balance a uh, negative part of that. And uh, I have, uh, remember, fund balance is more talked in balance sheet. And uh, before you, what you have is a balance sheet. You will not need to talk about the fund balance until you have a need. So we have received revenues, enough revenues in 2019 of $69 million. We spent $68 million. If nothing happens, you don't need fund balance. Should something happen unexpectedly, that's when you need fund balance. Because at any point in time, if you are familiar with the way FEMA works, should something happen, FEMA does not come up upfront with money. You have to spend money, they will reverse you. So should there be any other expenses that are not in our budget, that's where it will be. So you will not be hearing fund balance every time. The next time maybe you'll be hearing fund balance will be when the auditor is uh, presenting the, the budget. They will show you here is your fund balance. So with the balance sheet that you have in there, it details what are current assets? And current assets are what can support you, can support current liabilities. You are able to meet the expenses, obligations that are before you. But if you need beyond that, you need rainy day <coughs> funds. That's where fund balance comes up to. So it doesn't mean that even if we talk that the fund balance just was wiped away, it's still there. But I want to get into details is when we ended our fiscal year last year, the report that we have, which is online, our audited report, it shows that we have fund balance negative $7.5 million. It's in our books. Then we have received this revenue. We have received these expenses. We have 30. That $7.5 million is reduced now, it comes to $6.7 million as a negative. This one we discussed when we are talking about it, that if we have fund balance, we'll put it. If we don't have, we'll, that number would have gone up. However, this year, I think we have done a very good job. In this $6.7 million we have, we have $3.6 million in contingency. <coughs> So this is how it has been. I think we'll be talking about when we make, where we'll be making our budget amendment. We have $3.6 million that uh, the city manager recommended put aside $1.1 million earmarked. Then we also earmarked $1.5 million to reduce fund balance. So one, that $1.5 from this 6.7, that means we are already down. And if we remove $3.6 million to this, actually, if we cannot allocate that $3.6 million, in real sense, we have about $3.1 million as a negative in fund balance. So we are going down if we can stick to what we are doing. We can put down our expenses. We are on the right step. We made it, as you know, we started $12 million negative. 
And from 12 million dollars negative, now we are talking about six, we are talking about three. If we can continue on that, we are on the right path. So we will not need fund balance if there's nothing unusual. But we need to keep on what we have so far. Now we have already implemented there's the hiring freeze. The city manager allows to hire case by case. We allow to purchase equipment as they are needed, those that are critical. In other ways, we are trying to keep down expenses. So, in short, we are on the right path. I will entertain questions and the comments that you have. I have a friend. Do you have a contract for service for the development of the building? That is something that we hope to get in place. Um, we would just need to meet the council. Um, we've met with the development authority and the city personnel. And I guess we can put it on the agenda if the council is willing. You have a meeting coming up on the 26th, and the council is prepared to discuss and finalize. I think that would be a good opportunity. Would it be, to be retroactive? Retroactive. Well, you mean as far as the services that the city has provided on their reception? Yes, absolutely. The, we can make it whatever the council agrees to. I think that would be equitable. Uh, <laughs> the other thing is, uh, uh, I want to ask you about this Kenya FY2008 proposed amended budget. That's later on. That's later on. Is this later on in the agenda? It's, yeah. Uh, we have two budget amendments coming. I'll that conversation for them. Mm -hmm. Well, once again, thank you for the report. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. I like three, three million dollars on it. Uh, and uh, it's coming down even more than that. So just hang on. Oh, yes. Okay, let's do that. Senior citizen fund has no revenues. The old American? The old American. The old American, you passed it that every year you are going to fund $10,000. Okay. So, because there's no revenue, we transfer it from the general fund to support that event that year. So, I mean, should it not be on this balance sheet with like a zero balance or? It is in the general fund in the statement that I have given in here. Uh, if you see here, it's here. It's a ten thousand and thirty-five. You went above by thirty-five dollars. Gotcha. So these, these are all the restricted funds. So here you have the general fund is this one. Right. Then you have ten thousand because it has no revenue money is coming from general fund. No, this I understand. Is, These yeah. are all funds that were created by uh, ordinance or legislation, like exactly. the hotel, motel, tax, everything. Yes, the old Americans fund. What's missing is the blighted property fund. So we passed that in June of 2019, um, and it, and I don't see it this year. So that one, I think uh, we will get into that, and I think the city manager will be part of that. We will talk about that. All right, but. What I'm asking, so so we have a we have an item on the agenda to increase the fund, mm -hmm. but the fund should already exist because we passed legislation for it four months ago. But you don't have expenses, so if that one will stand, then you can always the money will come from general fund. 
And that's what we'll be getting into discussing because now you're increasing to 144. I don't want to get into before right, we get right, But I guess what I'm saying is there is a fund mm -hmm. that, has, that exists and legislation directed whoever does that to move money into that fund. So there should be money, like that should appear and there should be money in that fund. So, Councilman Karib, you directed to move money from general fund. That means you are reducing the funding of there, but you didn't say what <laughs> other expenses you are reducing. So, I presented here the 1st October uh, balanced budget. So I we, did so that. So, false. When we, when we created the older Americans bond, we didn't say where we would take the $10,000 from, but here it is. You directed, in the ordinance, you directed the money will come from general fund. But uh, the, that's an expenses. But so here, you're saying the, if I had the word general fund, then, then it, would, it would have appeared. <coughs> the difference is if this one is an expense, you say we want to meet these expenses, while the other one you are taking money from revenues. And if you are taking money from revenues, you have to say what expenses are you reducing to make the balanced budget, right. uh, the budget balanced. So you are moving money that have been already allocated to fund expenses. So let me ask you this. Yes, sir. When we had when we passed this four months ago, why did we have that conversation? We said that one and the evening, Councilman Khalid, I made an appointment to meet with you. I talked to the attorney. No, but I'm saying in the, in the public meeting when we took a vote and we had a discussion about creating this fund, why was this like not brought? If, if this was an issue. So, so for four months, we created something that, hasn't, that doesn't exist. And month after month after month, it hasn't existed. I'm just wondering, like, why, why are we just now? It, it may still now? be there because there's no corresponding expenses. So it may be there, you can transfer it any time, but there's no corresponding expenses. So you're, so you're saying that we have 100 blighted properties in this city, but there's no expenses for them? Because I think we have tons of expenses, how which much is why we created the fund. How much have they spent? And where have they paid from, if we have some? I think I got a little clarity. Do you mind? Yeah, go ahead. I think what Mr. Malazi is highlighting here is that the, this is a summary of actual expenses. So if I'm following correctly, the fund is there, but there has been no action taken or no expense. As a result, it is not shown. So he is saying oh, that- Are you saying that? Is the fund there? So, I talked to you. No, I'm just asking, is it, is it a yes or no question? That's is correct. The, the that's fund correct. is there. The fund is there, that's correct. So why wouldn't it just appear there? It's still in the general fund. Be because okay. it's still it's in the general fund. It's, it's still in the general fund. Okay. Uh, we, we didn't no. <laughs> it's, you know what, it's okay. We'll, we'll, we, we can wait till we have this, this discussion. But, but what I have a problem is with is that the council Directed for a fund to be created, and four months later, it still hasn't been created. Okay, Mr. Kay. That's a problem. Okay, Ms. Gunn. So, Mr. Malazi, um, just a quick question. For the 2019 proposed amendment, we're going to talk about that later. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'll save those two questions. Um, in regards to the hotel motel tax that we received, did we actually allocate that money anywhere? I know. Uh, South Fulton, Destination South Fulton, it was supposed to do something with that? Money. So we have uh, two parts of the uh, hotel motel. There is restricted, a percentage of restricted, and there is uh, that we can use in general fund. So the restricted one, we were almost warned last time that the past two years we have not been using. We have to use in that year. So what we did was to write a check to paid out for the restricted purposes. However, they had not yet uh, established the organization that the money will go. Now that one has already been established. Mr. Pike is working on that. So as soon as that one has finished it, the check is going there. So everything is included in there. We have the check that within 90 days it has to go to them. But the rest of that is part of the general fund. So what we earned, I guess, the year before, not 2019, 
we wrote a check out for that amount. This check I'm talking about includes the previous year and the 2019. And 2019. Yes, so that, that money will be going to Destination South Coast. Correct. And do you remember how much that was? It's about 95, if I'm. 95, right? So on the. About 94,000. 94, 95,000. But the number that's on this is not right, the 118. That one includes part of it. So it's a fraction that goes there. That's what we received. The other one has to go to general fund. The funds for confiscated, the, uh, the police uh, confiscated asset funds. What is that going to, we're supposed to have, that's unrestricted funds, correct? Mm -hmm. So what is that going to be updated? So the nature of the fund, if you remember, I sent you, I sent you the uh, report, and the PD, the uh, director, the city manager, we have been working there. There are some information that because some of the receipts are still under investigation that we didn't want to make it public as it is, but I sent it to you. So far, we don't have any update, current update, but we are working on that one. And <coughs> we will collectively, me, the city manager, and the chief, we will keep you posted. Yes, but Mr. Malazi, even though you have some funds that um, have not been approved for uh, revenue purposes, we still are supposed to report that. Um, for example, I was looking at a financial report in Sandy Springs, mm -hmm. and they have a total of funds, and then they have a, uh, a total of funds that have been expended, and then they have a total of funds that have been not approved. So um, it is still supposed to be reported in our financials. The investigation. I, I do understand that, but um, it's still supposed to be reported. I sent you for September, end of September, I sent you, and nothing has taken place since then. So that okay. report you have is still the same. But that information is supposed to be available for the public to see as well. So if possible. Okay, we, we will. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is. Uh, you know, this conversation keeps coming up. Yes, and when we talk about fund balance, a, a $6.7 million deficit, mm -hmm. uh, can you please uh, get some type of communication out about that? Because residents are thinking that we have a deficit, and we do not have a deficit. We have a de deficit as it relates to where we want to outgo, where we want to go, and how much fund balance we want to have, and based on the policy that we pass, but we do not have a deficit as far as we're, we're making enough revenue, we're paying our expenses. Am I explaining this correct? Yes. Uh, and and I'm, I'm going to also yield to Council Member uh, Rao, because this is very conflicting, and um, I don't want residents to think that we are broke. And I don't want residents to think that we can't pay our bills. So there are some communities where they will, we have never here, since 2017, we have never come to a day where I have to sit down with the staff to look for bills, which one should we pay, which one should we defer. It has never happened. We have never delayed to pay payroll for everyone. But they can understand that we started with the $12 million negative. No bank wanted to have us because they didn't know we are going to make it. So if you look where we have come from and where we are going and we keep up, we have an ordinance and the ordinance says we have to have about $2 million. $2 million this year, I'm saying we have put aside we should be getting there, $3.6 million. If nothing comes up, that money is there. And uh, I talked about the uh, TIS plus, which I didn't talk about. Now we are saying about uh, $6.1 million, plus that three will end up with $3.1 million. However, we have not yet received uh, our 
sales tax money for <coughs> September because we receive one month behind. Yeah. So that's another $2 million that we have not received for the month of September. So if you add that $2 million, that means we have a million or less than a million dollars in deficit. We always underestimate revenue just in case something happens. If we can keep on where we are going, we will make it very soon. Remember in our ordinance we talked about three years. Yes. So that in the ordinance it talks about three years. If we can keep it up, we will make it. Before even the end of 2021, unless something happens, we drift from where we are. All right, Ms. Brown. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I want to follow up on what our councilwoman Willis said. Uh, in 2017, um, I sponsored the legislation, and Councilwoman Gilliard co sponsored with me. Um, and what we did is we adopted the fund balance policy. And the policy was to maintain adequate balances and reserves in case something happened. And so what it was is that we wanted to set aside between 10 and 12% of the subsequent year's budgeted expenditures. So like um, has been previously stated, that's a target that we had that much money in the bank in case something happens. So uh, I just want the public to understand that so when we go out and we repeat that we have a deficit when we don't, we're hurting ourselves. So just be mindful, these terms can't just be interchanged between deficit and fund balance. So I just wanted to offer that, that clarity. I also wanted to mention that um, when you look at other cities when they incorporated, most of them didn't have a fund balance at all for five or six years. So, I mean, if you listen back to when our auditors came, they actually applauded us for us moving in this direction early on. So we're actually ahead of the game. So I just want to point that out, and uh, thank you. And right. none of the uh, new municipalities that started, they paid off their debt in the less than five years. Yes. None of them. And again, we received, we budgeted for insurance premiums for $5 million. <laughs> However, we received $7 million. Oh, I'm very clear. So, I'm a fiscal consultant, yeah, so, so trust me. We are on the right path if we, we can maintain what we are doing. Okay, I'm going to go this conversation with you. I just wanted to say that I think that it was really, really important to put it in the right context because it is the, the right. We started out with, with zero and then we moved to a negative 12 million real quick because we started out with nothing. And that's really how we got there with what's left over with that seven, but it's continuing to come back. <coughs> and that's what's really, really important. Mm -hmm. And that's why I asked you, like I said before, to bring the balance sheet so that everyone can see that the balance sheet is really about what you own, what you owe, and what's left over. And it doesn't have anything to do with other types of financial statements which are focused on revenue and expenses than what's left. So I think we're doing a good job. It's there, but we're doing a good job. I know I see the many things I think Mayor, just to kind of chime in, I was looking at something uh, regarding Sandy Springs, because I know we always get compared to them, but you know, it should be noted that we're not kind of increasing the burden on our residents because we're a startup city. I was just reading this and I just thought people would find it interesting. They had a 300% increase in the number of speeding tickets that they wrote to be able to cover their budget in the first two years. That's a, that's a big difference between the type of governance, leadership, and management that we're implementing than some of the cities that are recognized as the model for startups. And so they've done a really good job of burying their Google results so you don't find that easily, but that's just not the type of governance and action that you have here, and you are underspending repeatedly every year. So definitely kudos to the, to the uh, treasurer as well as to the council as well as our citizens for holding us accountable. But those type of things get lost in translation often, but I think we'd rather kind of make be frugal than to increase the number of speeding tickets by 300%. Right, so I would right, just leave it. Okay.
significantly the validation process that we have set in tow with the finance with the financial advisors as well as the bond attorney that we're working with so my request is that if the meeting will accommodate you've already set a meeting for the 26 that we could put the URA um, on that meeting schedule so we can continue with the validation process to, to get these projects covered in, in this year and the second request would be if we could also um, the mayor indicated um, the agreement with the development authority as far as services, if we could put that on to maybe just entertain that conversation again about the um, services and the cost structure, I think that would be a good timing to try to finish this in, in fiscal in this year as well. I think that one of the things on the URA side that uh, there was some there was some dramatic issues that the city officials is involved. Uh, and so when we do things like that, that 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 slows down the process. And so uh, I think that uh, if we're ready to go and, and grammatically correct and say it what we want to say it, I think it's fine. All right? Well, I would need a motion um, to authorize that on the agenda for the 26, those two items, to add those two items, which would be the URA as well as the discussion about eight. I, I would say, I would say if they're ready to go. I mean, I can't, I want to add something prematurely. Well, the only thing that needs to be clarified is um, the address for one of the parks, and I'm actually going to take out all the addresses, period, and I don't okay. want to so. put the address and then we limit ourselves to just that address. There's other parcels that have addresses that are slightly different, so I'm, I'm going to exclude every is. reference to addresses, and then um, I think Councilwoman um, Rao asked me to clarify some of the language with respect to what we were doing at Sandtown, and it was consistent with what you had wanted previously. And I just wanted to make sure the address is correct. So if you're taking them out across. Yeah, the we're taking them out across the board. And that's in the, the copy that we have of everyone else. So and then um, what I also do is I put authorization for myself as well as the clerk to tidy up any um, proofing, editing, numbering um, in these documents. So even after you adopt something, we can easily clean up anything that's necessary. Well, I don't I don't think I, I would entertain you know, just voting for something I haven't seen on the agenda yet. I mean, uh, it came back because of issues. So once the issues are cleared up, there should be an issue about putting it on the agenda. So I don't, I, we've never done that before, to vote on something tonight we haven't seen to put on, this, on the agenda for another issue. Well, what I would do is, if you authorize it to put on the agenda, then I would just forge copies by email and say this is what we'll be considering. Um, well, I can't just forge the copies, let us look at it, we'll put it on the agenda. Oh, so just do make or the copies, or the copies, make your make your uh, adjustments, and then we'll put it on the So when you have a special meeting, we're limited to what's in the call of the meeting. Um, so if we don't, if, we have a, so, so if, you, if you don't authorize me in advance to present this that day, I wouldn't be able to procedurally to, to bring it as a walk home. Go ahead, Ms. Green. So previously, in last month's meeting, we converted 1210, which is a regularly scheduled council meeting, to just a zoning meeting. I think that these topics would be better served at the 1210 meeting. It would give more time to uh, go over these lists. We also have some budget ordinances that are a first read, and we will have to have a second meeting to even pass those. So I think all of these budget issues could be on the agenda of the 1210 meeting. We just need to reestablish the 1210. <coughs> Mr. Donnie, have we, started, have we established a budget for the 1210 meeting? 
No, I think what he's saying is that these are budgetary items mm -hmm. that have to be addressed prior to the end of basically this calendar year. Mm -hmm. And so he's saying for the ease of operations, like one budget amendment is on here today. I think it's the first the read or two. And I think well, and I think at least one of them is the first read. Both first. What Mr. Khalid is recommending is that let the second read occur on December 10th and you could bundle all of these financial issues into one meeting versus trying to carry them into 2020. Okay. Which I think we can, pro that gives us, if you make, take an action today, it will give staff an opportunity to prepare and submit within the, the clerk's current timeline. So I, I, I think remain. you would have my support. I'm gonna change the motion. So I'll make a motion to reestablish the regular meeting. Of the Bobby moves the second. Any discussion? Yes. Um, for the fiscal 19 budget amendment, I would like to. Um, are we going to discuss that at all today? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I will do it. Okay. Let's vote. That passes unanimously. Okay. So, Mayor, I think as you have requested on the uh, budget amendment piece, some of those uh, activities related to the budget amendment does tie into real estate and litigation. And so it may be a good idea that at whatever point you discuss that, you have a brief executive session prior. Litigation and real estate. Yes, you're... So we have, the, I'm sorry, we, we established a regular meeting, mm -hmm. which means that at 5 p.m. we'll have a work session. Mm -hmm. At 6 p.m. we'll have an executive session. Well, I, I don't, if that's your decision. Right? And, that's no, that, that, that's, that's what we just did. We established a regular meeting. So our regular meetings are a work session at 5, an executive session at 6, and a meeting at 7. Is that what we voted on, Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Okay, good. All right, Madam Clerk, go ahead. I'm going to leave that alone. Next item on the agenda is approval of the consent agenda. Number three, council approval to authorize the city manager to provide a letter to Union City authorizing them to provide water services to city of South Fulton residents located at 5795 Dobson Road. Item number five, council approval of finance committee appointments. Councilman Morale appointing uh, Robert Hawkins, Councilman McGilliard appointing Robert Harvey both to the Finance Committee. And item number six, Council approval to extend the alcohol renewal deadline date. I'll entertain a motion. <laughs> second. Property move the second. Any, any discussion? Yes. Uh, just clarification on the finance. If a, if a council member is served, do they appoint two? I'm just trying to be clear. Oh, yes. I didn't understand you. Yes. yes. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's vote. That passes unanimously, Madam Clerk. Next item. Next item is a previous item agenda. Council approval and the second read approval and adopting of the false alarm ordinance. I'll accept the motion. I make a motion to approve adopting false alarm ordinance amendment. <coughs> Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? That passes unanimously, Madam Clerk. Next item is council approval of adopting code of code enforcement ordinance. Second read. I make a motion to approve this ordinance. Second. Second. I have a question. Come up. Okay. You gave you gave to me a financial impact study. Is that correct? In That's design? correct. Would you would you uh, tell us what that financial impact study is? So I discussed, actually we are supposed to be have discussed that one from the last meeting with the city manager, but unfortunately we didn't. So we talked today and the, we explained what the impact will be on that one. What the impact it will be, it's asking for 
uh, removal or putting aside $148,000 to remove it from, general, from all revenues of code enforcement have to be put aside plus one and a half, one and a half percent of general fund for a total of $148,000 that is not in the budget. And I said the best way to do, instead of allocating revenue for expenses, is to allocate expenses, just as we did with the old America. You say we don't have to fundraise, we don't have to do this, but it moved from general fund, or when you are making a budget, put aside so much money. The problem with this is, if you say you remove $148,000 from general fund, which is a balanced budget, what expenses are you removing? What expenses are you reducing? And the other one is you are saying take all code enforcement revenues. You will not know those revenues until at the end of the fiscal year. So you cannot spend now if you want to use that money to spend it for code enforcement projects until at the end of the year when you know how much you have collected. Right. So instead of that, it's a better way of allocating expenses. It can come from wherever you may want, reduce other expenses, or move money from uh, contingency so, and allocate it. So and I hear what you're saying, Mr. Malawi. Uh, so you, you would have needed some clear direction as to where the reduction in, in line item was to, to account for this hundred forty-eight thousand eight hundred twenty-one dollars and ninety-five cents. Yes, I discussed that one with the attorney, and I requested if I would meet with Councilwoman uh, Reed so that he, we can explain, and he, unfortunately none of that didn't happen. So the city manager here said, okay, let's say meet it with Councilman Khalid so that we can explain. Instead of using revenues, we can use expenses and allocate, so it will still do what he wants it done. Thank you, Mr. Dredd. Mr. Don, you want to say anything, anything there? Yeah, so that, I guess that's that's close. What I would, I think we can do is we do have to establish the fund because the council directed us to. It's that simple and that plain. But I also believe that we can look at past year citations to do projections, which is the same thing that we do whenever we budget. And so while we will know the actual expenses uh, as they come in, I'm sorry, the actual revenues as they come in, we simply couldn't spend money until we collect. So there are two ways to do it. Either you budget for it and you add an expense at the beginning and then you offset it with projected revenues or as the council is currently directed, they've allocated a certain amount of money through ordinance and as we collect the 50%, collect those revenues, we're then authorized to uh, use them to carry out all of these blight activities. It's, it's kind of what's well, your flavor, but I think the ordinance does direct us in what the, the council's preference right. is, and once they vote, we'll be able to take action. Well, what's the, what do you think is the most re reasonable and prudent way to do it? Well, I'm, I'm talking about it. Yeah, For me, the best way is to approximately, which is the community development director will be the best person to estimate what it, what will be needed. So in, in this case, you may say we need $200,000. We need $250,000. Put that one in an expenditure, period. Next year, that 200 is not enough to <coughs> increase the budget. Don't talk with the revenues, because the revenues are general, they are put in one part. In that part is where you allocate all expenses. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. And what would you, you would say different? Well, I think, you know, the Charles Abbott contract is a good example. I, I wouldn't want it to go opposite of our, our city treasurer. I think he's being safe, sound, and frugal, so there's always a benefit to that. But I think when we look at, like, the Charles Abbott contract, for example, that's an example as to where we've outperformed the contract. I think there's no... Uh, uh, it's not a secret that blight has been an issue for the city and so as we find and collect and solve the issue we will have revenues and it just requires us to 
make sure we stay diligent and adjust accordingly. And so with 50% of those funds, I'm sorry, I haven't looked at the ordinance in about a week, but I think it's about 50%. It's 100%. It's 100%. Plus 100%. It's 100%. Of all things. Got it. So there may be some, some adjustments that may need to be made there, but I think as you collect, you'll be able to track regularly and then allocate funds accordingly. And there again, there's no shortage of blight. Uh, so it's, it's, it's what is your preference? You can do either way. I kind of say we'll make a recommendation and then defer to the council. I know there have been conversations. And so based on what you vote on, we'll be able to respond. So Mr. Um, so Mr. Malazzi, you said that, that, it's, that it's hard to make a projection about the expenses. Because you know, we can make it from what we have collected so far. Right, because right? you have made that projection. Right, but that 100%, like last year, it was about $75,000, which you will not maybe do what you want. No, it won't. So, yeah, so it will so not what, be so, enough. So, so what I want people to understand is that we're talking in circles, but we ain't knocked down no houses. There are houses in Hillendale that have been blighted mayor since you were county commissioner. Why haven't we knocked them down? Because we never put any money aside to do it. Um, is Miss Reed here? Um, could you could you come forward, please? Um, we have a blighted property list. It has 42 houses on it. I bet some of y'all could add about 10 more of those. Um, how much would it cost just to knock down an average house? And what are the steps? And why hasn't coded? Why hasn't community development knocked down any blighted house? So we did research to see what that average would look like nationally. So it says about a minimum of 5000 to 15000 um, based on large square footage, of course. Um, so with that being said, depending on the square footage, that price will um, vary. So if you take one home per district, so take that seven to 15000 as the max, that'll be about, I think, 105 is what I calculated. So that puts you at $105,000 to where if every year we knock down a home that's, that's ready to be condemned, um, that would bring you at least one home per district. So one home per district. And so far in the past two years, how many homes have we knocked down? None. None. Um, it's my understanding, because I want, I want people to understand, because I know that sometimes people think, I call code enforcement over and over and over, and they're not doing anything. But actually, you've written dozens and dozens of tickets, but all that they do is result in a lien right. that cannot be collected on unless the house is sold. Right. So as long as nobody sells the house, you it's can't okay. collect on the lien and the house just stands there. Right. It would actually take an inspection, a legal process to seize the house, and a foreclosure process. All those have to be done even before we spend the 15000 knocking the house down. Is that why we haven't knocked any houses down in, in two years? I can't speak on why we haven't knocked right. down Right, okay. So, so anyway, so the, the purpose of this ordinance, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and call the question, because the purpose of this ordinance is to stop pussyfooting around and actually put some money where our mouths are to knock down some houses. Thank you. I don't, I don't think. Second. 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 Discussion is fine. Um, <coughs> I think all of us are concerned about the value of property. I support this ordinance, but we have to stop doing this and not putting the funds and finding the source of the funds. Because that's why we're in some of the situation. We're passing ordinances and we haven't aligned it with the money. We need to come back with a line item that is coming out of. So we, like you said, we got to move it from somewhere. We need to figure out where that's somewhere so they can do something. I think we all have blighted properties that we want to knock down, but, uh, and, and I heard from our code enforcement board member that they want the support as well. But I'd rather finance come back and tell us, listen, we can move it from here. If we're gonna deal with some budget changes anyway at the next meeting, let's do it and let's do it right. Okay, good right. discussion. Well, let, let me just say this. Do you have a suggestion? Mr. Lyle, did you want to say something? So, on the 10th, we'll give you uh, how much we'll put aside. Okay. Let, me, let me say this. Uh, 
Nobody's trying not to do the right thing. Even though even the treasurer said that. The treasurer just said, just tell me where to get the money from. You know, and what are we gonna what are we gonna take off, what are we gonna put down? So and in the case about when I was commissioned, you know, we, we tore down houses on the community development block grant. And so don't go there. So the other thing is I'm, I'm just dropping yeah, houses in my name. Tell you what that'll be up since you can ask. Okay. Uh, but let me say this. Let me say this. That's what we need to be doing. Is applying for a community development block grant. And if we plan to apply for a community development block grant, we could have tore a lot of houses down. We waiting for a nest egg from our sale. When we could have been getting it from the federal government. I mean, hold up, hold up, hold up. That's okay. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. Lay out. That's one of the secure people on the still is today. So. So he called this. I have a I have a motion on the floor in a second. All those in favor? That's four to three. That's justice. That's four to three. So we're going to vote now. We call the previous question. So the previous question? Was it a previous question? Yes. Okay. I, well, we call the previous question. I'm looking. Let me hear. I didn't see you. This was the previous question, right, Ms. Clark? Yes. Let's take a vote on the previous question. Let me see your hand. We just did. Four to three. What's the question? To go to the previous question. To go to the previous question. So who wants this vote on the previous question? This vote on the previous question. Read it. The previous question was to adopt the code enforcement ordinance. So we all know. Call it for a vote. Call it for a vote. No, Mr. Malazzi just said that he was going to bring it back. Where the money, where so, the money would be coming from on December 8th. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm not willing to wait till December 10th to find out. Um, so if he could do that for December 10th, why did he do that for this meeting? So this is the because second reading. I'm not oh, excuse, me. excuse me. Excuse me. We need to vote on this. I'm calling for the vote already. It went 4-3. It both went 4-3. For what? I thought it was the previous question. That was the first one. Without the money. This was the motion forward. It was 4-3. So I'm going to make a, I, I need to make a second motion. I'm going to instruct our, uh, we have a first read for our budget amendment. So I'm going to make a second motion to approve the first read of our budget amendment. We have a first read for our budget amendment. I'm going to instruct our CFO slash treasurer to find that money and put it in the uh, second media budget. That's what I said. I'll be moving second. All those in favor? That passed. That makes sense. Next. Madam Chair. The next item on the agenda is item number four. Council approval of the 2020 2023 City of South Wales strategic plan. Okay. I'll look at a motion. I make a motion to approve the 20 to 23. 2020 to 2023 strategic plan. Second. Property move to second discussion. I would just like to note that um under goal number three of the strategic plan, one of the goals is to knock down black property. Okay. Duly noted. Uh Hearing no, no further discussion, all those in favor? Did you, did you know? We did. We did. Madam Clerk, did we pull this off of the... Yes, we did. We pulled it off of the consent to go to the regular agenda. Regular agenda. Is there any discussion? No, we're good. We're good. We're good. All right, all the, uh, there's a motion on the floor. Am I correct, Madam Clerk? Motion to approve. Second by? Willis. Willis. Okay, let's vote. That passes five to Miss Miss Gilliard. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Mr. 
Next item on the agenda, council approval to purchase technology for the fire department. I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to purchase mobile technology for the fire department. Not to exceed 120,000. Second. Property moved and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all I'm those Mayor, I, do, I do have one discussion item, and this is, it involves a purchase with fire. Um, so you have other fire purchases that are in the URA, and after you're um, putting this or allowing this to go on the December 10th agenda, I text our financial advisor because my concern is you're not going to be able to get the funding for these projects in this year if you put it on that date. And his response was he absolutely cannot get the funding in 2019 if you wait until the 10th to approve, to approve the, the URA. Which means that, and I asked him, I said, why is it going to impact them negatively if they don't get the financing this year? And his response is that the banks have aggressive targets and goals to hit as far as funding. And if you don't get it approved this year, then if you go into the next fiscal year, their goals and priorities are going to restart and there's not going to be incentive to give you a good interest rate, which means that if you hear this, if you hear URA on December 10th, he will not be able to get the funding this year. So, how did that affect you? Th this one is in the general fund. This is not. Well, I know this is in the general fund, but I'm saying it's, we're talking about fire purchases, so I'm just letting you know that if you don't at some point in this meeting reconsider putting the other additional fire purchases through the URA and that funding on for your meeting on the 26th, I'm just giving you a heads up that you will not be able to get your URA funding and the anticipated interest rate in this in this year. So that was part of the motion and second on the floor, am I correct, Madam Clerk? No, that was discussion on the motion to approve the per this purchase. Okay, so this purchase no, we had our other related to URA. And this purchase is not related to the URA. Okay, so that's that was my question. You know, I was trying to hook in what you were saying to this purchase. So we're saying this purchase is not related to URA. No, this purchase is not related to okay, URA. Okay, it's only let's... related in the sense that it involves fire purchases that are not going to occur. Okay, but we can move on. Move on. Yeah, you can okay. Move on from this. Uh, that's, that's a good that's all I want to know. Uh, is there a motion? The motion was made by Councilmember Brown, second by Councilmember Wallace. Let's vote. For the, fire, for the fire department. Yes. That's uh, six to one. So that's unanimous. Okay. Go Next ahead. item is council approval to enter into an agreement with Motorola for radios for the public safety and code enforcement department. I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve uh, for approval to enter into an agreement with Motorola for police radios. Second. Property moves and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? That passes unanimously. Madam Clerk? Next item is council approval of a resolution policy for road closures. I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve the resolution for a road closure policy. Second. Property moves and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? That passes to people as unanimous. Madam Clerk. Next item is the first reading to amend the FY19 budget. First reading. It's the first. It's just the first. It's the first reading. And this is Christian. So, on the first read, I do have a question. You have, you gave us a proposed amendment. Uh, what was published to the public is different from what you had given us. So there were a couple of things that were over budget in the fiscal 19 budget. One was the District 6 budget of $2,173. The other one was the contracted legal services for $49,375. Uh, public work is over budget by $537,000. Uh, 
Um, we already talked about the thirty-five dollar um, over budget. That's that's uh, that's not material. But the sixty-four thousand dollars and nine hundred and eighteen dollars in anticipated uh, note, two hundred thousand dollars in other financing, and so I just have some concern because a part of us being fiscally responsible is when we set a budget. We're supposed to work within our budget. For example, each council member has $65,000 allocated to them each year. And that $65,000 is supposed to be used for us to operate, whether it's to mail, whether it's to take training, whether it's for hospitality. We have a lot of items we're supposed to work. So my concern is, I understand you have to do your job and balance the budget. I'm not criticizing that. But what I am um, concerned about, and I'm going to ask the mayor to investigate. So since we're talking about investigations and we're going to discuss investigations, I would love the mayor to investigate. Um, we received information from several GMA at, G at the GMA training um, that there was a class taken in Jekyll Island and um, District 6 council member paid over close to $3,000 for that class, and that person did not get credit for that class. So therefore, our tax dollars were spent for a class that a person did not get credit for. Yes, that's the class I left for her. So I would like for the mayor to investigate that expenditure. Yeah, that's the class I left for her. Excuse me. Et cetera, et cetera, were all under there. Okay. So don't, yeah, don't forget. I they stay that. there okay. until, yeah, in so 20 right. they move, in 19 they're in the same place. Okay. Yeah. So you've got to ask any department <laughs> if you need the details how to expense, we'll be That explains it. Thank you. Okay. Madam Clerk? Okay. Um, <coughs> next item <coughs> Council approval of first reading of amending tax, tax ordinance. TA-001, section 19.3.31, food trucks. Any discussion? Hearing none. Madam Clerk. Council approval of first read of amending text ordinance TA-002 to revise the city overlay district. Any question, discussion? I have a question. The only, it's not um, directly related to that because I know that um, it's being held, but what I would like to request is a copy for council to receive a copy of the zoning commission meeting, the minutes, the minutes of the meetings. And really, um, as Councilman Khalid and I talked about earlier, 
we don't get the minutes from any of the committees. So that would be kind of good, you know, to have so that we could, you know, we could be online or whatever as long as we could, could have um, those minutes. Okay, so they'll be unofficial because they won't be approved by the board, so it'll be like an unofficial copy if that is presented to you before their meeting to adopt or approve the minutes. Kind of very similar to how you run your meetings. They have to approve the minutes before, right? So it'll be a draft. That'd be good. Okay. Okay. All right, ma'am. I'm sorry. Do we have a date yet when we're going to bring back the zoning overall? Um, so we will have that file, as, as always noted, that's going to be completed in December. So they're coming before you in your January, um, I think it's the 14th, I may be incorrect on that date, but I think it's January 14th as a work session. They're going to will out the changes that they've made in the edge and introduce that to you. So that, kind of going back to your point, I introduced to them that you were concerned that you're going to have, okay, it's going to be January 14th, um, that you had concerns about, I guess, dissecting, or not really dissecting, but kind of looking at a 500-page file and trying to understand that. And so they're going to kind of come in the work session for you again, explain to you what they've done, show the work, receive the blessings from you all before sharing it with the public to ensure that that's, in, in fact, the direction you were wishing they would go in the about. So do you have any update on, this is my final question, do you have any update on when the entire process would be completed and we might have a new zoning code? Will that happen in Spring of 2020, we've, summer of 2020. We've always said it'll be spring of 2020. So you'll have your review process happening from January up until close to, I would say, maybe March. You'll be pretty much reviewing the file. So we had a meeting on yesterday confirming that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, Madam Clerk. Next item, Council approval of first reading of amending text ordinance TA-003 to revise provisions applicable to regulations of service stations and convenience stores. Any discussion? Right here. Um, I would like um, the city attorney to give a look at this um, before it comes back for the second read about looking at um, um, smoke paraphernalia being sold in a certain proximity to a school. <laughs> So who those kind of things? Please uh, look at how we could amend that address that. Thank you. Go ahead. Attorney Walker, if you recall a couple of months ago, I sent you Milton's policy regarding the bait shop, and I asked you, is there a way that we could uh, uh, pass a legislation in the city of South Fulton um, similar to that banning futuristic bait shops? in the city of South Milton. Um, this measure has been taken in Milton and I think another city in Metro Atlanta. So if you can look at that. And then um, I would love to, uh, if you would like to co-sponsor, uh, I would love to co-sponsor that uh, at the top of the year with Council Member Rao. Okay. Next item is Council approval of first reading of amending text ordinance TA-004 to regulate party houses in residential districts. Discussion. Mary, council, that is the um, regular agenda for today. Wow. We get good. Yes, we are. Come on up, wait a minute. I'd like to make a motion for executive session uh, regarding real estate and. Uh, Real estate only. Only on real estate. Real estate. Just real estate. That was my second. Just real estate. Motion is. Was it a second, Mr. Baker? Your your motion was on real estate only. That was a second by whom? Okay. Okay. Can I make a substitute motion to add personnel as well? Second. 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 Second.
Probably move the second in discussion. All those in favor? No. All right. Uh, I like Madam Clerk. Were there any? No. None. No, no action in this executive session. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Probably move the second to adjourn. Discussion. Good night, everyone. Thank you for staying. All right. All in favor, Mr. Jackson, raise your hand. All right.